Hello, I'm Dr. James Bogash, expert in health and longevity, and today we're going to talk about something not brand new, and that has to do with fiber and a specific type of fiber and its risk of, or its effect on the risk of cancer, especially cancers of the GI tract. Now, when we talk about fiber, generally people are aware of soluble and insoluble and that's usually where the knowledge stops. However, there are actually three types of accepted fibers. Um, basically, fibers in our body are things that we don't digest. So, the, however, the bacteria in our gut can digest it and they use that to thrive and grow and do good things for us. So, soluble fiber is generally found in like beans and artichokes and foods like that. It gels up when you put it, when it's, it sits in water. Uh, those are really heavily used by the bacteria in our gut. The insoluble fiber is really not digested by anything, but it serves almost like a scouring function as it goes through the gut. Uh, when you think, <laughs> I, people think I'm crazy, but I actually eat peanut shells because it's just way too much work to get to that little tiny nut, so I just eat the whole thing. Uh, not only am I probably getting unusual bacteria, but that's that's fiber that nothing's going to digest, but that acts as a kind of a cleansing, scouring motion as it goes through. Resistant starch is another type of starch that is formed. Uh, it, it's naturally occurring in certain foods like green bananas or plantains. It's also found in beans and lentils, usually less processed beans and lentils, but also with certain carbohydrates when you cook them and then cool them. So think something like sticky rice or potatoes that are cooked and cooled. When they, when they, re, when they cool, they form different bonds. These farm, farm bonds are generally considered risk resistant starch. Uh, it's also available as a supplement, but I'm generally a food type person as far as how we should get different fibers or prebiotics. The, so Lynch syndrome is a condition of when families have really high risk of certain cancers, especially the GI tract and, and colorectal cancer, it's termed Lynch syndrome. So anything that can drastically lower the risk of cancer in these groups, in these families, is that's a pretty powerful tool in in helping, especially if there's no downside to it. So this was a study on 937 people with Lynch syndrome, and they gave them either placebo or resistant starch for four years, but they followed them for up to 20. So we're talking about four years of an intervention, basically taking 30 grams of resistant starch per day, and followed them for up to 20 years. Like that's a huge length of time. And they found that for overall, uh, it did not have an effect on colorectal cancer. It did have an effect on non-colorectal cancer, uh, a 46% lower risk of any other type of cancer other than colorectal. And for GI, so think upper GI, so like stomach, esophagus, small intestine, it's pretty mm -hmm. impressive 43% reduction in those types of cancers. Um, the numbers were small. There were five mm -hmm. in the, the placebo group, and I'm sorry, 21 in the placebo and five in the in the um, group taking resistant starch, that's still a pretty huge change in um, for a short-term intervention. Uh, a couple thoughts with this is that largely probably has a role in uh, in changing the gut bacteria and how they and the protective compounds that they produce, but. There's also some people that think that certain starches actually bind up bile acids. And bile acids are generally, if they're not doing anything and they're just in our, can be an irritant and can increase the risk of cancer. Little tidbit that they don't tell you when they pull your gallbladder out. I have had multiple people have had gallbladder surgery. Nobody ever tells them that it increases the risk of colorectal cancer. It's required, it's informed consent, that's an accepted side effect bothers me when that happens and it happens all the time. It bothers me probably more because the doctors taking the gallbladder out don't really even know the downstream consequences. Um, so 
just kind of a little sidebar there. But as always, I will post a link to this particular study in the description. Make sure you like this video, share it with somebody who you think needs the information, and subscribe to the channel.